Today we are reading a retelling of the classic Aesop's fable, The Lion and the Mouse, illustrated by Jerry Pinkney. He's one of the most wonderful illustrators of children's books working today. So let's get right into it. The Lion and the Mouse. Aesop's fables usually start or end with the moral of the tale. And on this book jacket it says, Sometimes even the king needs help, and little friends may prove to be great friends. Ooh, there's the lion. Jerry Pinkney, The Lion and the Mouse. And he dedicates the book to my first great-granddaughter, Zion Mackenzie Noel, and to all things that squeal, purr, roar, hoot, screech, bark, meow, chirp, and neigh. There's the mouse. Ooh, look, there's a big lion's footprint right next to it. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, look. It seems like night is turning into day. And the little mouse is looking out on the savannah. Screech! Oh! That howls after the mouse, but the mouse dives into its hole and is safe. Hmm. It's running away. And there she pops out again. Maybe she's looking for food. Now she's crawling somewhere. I'm not quite sure where. Oh no! She was crawling on a lion and a lion grabs the mouse. His big, huge paws. The lion looks at the little mouse. The little mouse is so afraid. Hmm, you don't look like much to eat. Oh, I wouldn't be much to eat unless I have a family at home. Please, lion, don't eat me. I don't know. I'm quite hungry. But, you know, someday I might be able to save you if you were in trouble, and I would. <laughs> A little creature like you save me? I don't think so. But thanks for the laugh. I'll let you go on your way. The lion let the mouse go. Oh, and she ran back to her house, the little nest in the rocks, and to all her little babies. They were so happy to see her. Sweet, 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 sweet. And the lion went walking on the savannah, enjoying the day and perhaps looking for something to eat. <gasps> Uh-oh. I recognize that truck. It's, it's a poacher truck. I saw one at the Bronx Zoo. They had an exhibit. They showed how dangerous those poacher trucks are because the people in them want to hunt lions. Yep, there they are. They're making the bad net to catch the lion. Lions walking through the jungle. Look at all the incredible animals. But there's the net. There's the trap. Oh, no. Then the lion steps on the rope. <gasps> oh, the big, fierce lion is caught in the net. Oh, no. All the animals are so shocked, they don't know what to do. The little mouse, she hears the roars of the lion, and she runs quickly to see if she could help. Checking out the situation. She notices that the net is tied to a tree. She 
runs up the net to the line and says, don't worry, you be patient. I'll let you out. The line is very discouraged. Could the little mouse possibly help him? The little mouse begins to gnaw and scratch and bite at the tough big rope. And finally, she gets one strand of the rope free. And then she scratches and bites and claws through another one and another one. And suddenly the net falls from the tree and the lion is safe. Hooray! The lion is so grateful to the mouse. Thank you so much. I appreciate it so much. I'd never thought a little creature like you could help a big lion like me. Oh, think nothing of it. It was the least I could do to return your favor to me. Then, Little Mouse, always thinking of her kids too, took one of the knots and she carried it all the way home to her family. And the little mice played with it and rolled it around and bit at it and scratched at, at it and learned how to be big mice just like their mom. Squeak, 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 squeak. The end. Join me next week for story time. Thank you.